This podcast episode is brought to you by Coors Light. These days, everything is go, go, go. It's nonstop hustle all the time. Work, friends, family expect you to be on 24-7. Well, sometimes you just need to reach for a Coors Light because it's made to chill. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged. It's as crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. It is literally made to chill. Coors Light is the one I choose when I need to unwind. So when you want to hit reset, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light in the new look delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Welcome back to Short Shifts and Lewis. I have to say, tonight I feel especially like Rope Hints in the way that we're breaking the streak of doing one on, one off, one on, one off. I'm finally, it's it's finally you and I for two shows in a row. Uh, of course, my name is Ben Burnett, welcoming Lewis Ezekiel. Lewis, how do you feel to be the Rope Hints of fantasy hockey podcasting? Well, it's great. You know, I feel like, you know, the two times a week that we're actually in the lineup, we're, we're doing great things. And, and now if we can, you know, we're together for this little chunk here, we're back a couple games in a row. Maybe we can be uh, reliable contributors in the lineup here. Yeah, let's not rest on our laurels just because we, we popped out a bang and show on Tuesday. Let's make sure that we finish the week strong. Heading into the weekend ahead of uh, Elon and Brian's mega show on Sunday. Of course, we are going to start with the Buffalo Sabres, how could you not start a hockey po- a fantasy podcast talking about Buffalo? I mean, here's a team that is a obviously total disaster this year. Like what a wreck it's been. And I've tr- been trying to follow the Sabres because I remember last year, Lewis, we did it was it just worked out as such that we were always doing shows right after coaches got fired. And in a lot of cases, it's like, all right, so, you know, uh, Laviolette's gone in Nashville, probably Phil Forsberg gets more time on ice, that's good for him or whatever. Like, usually you can you can draw some broad strokes. But with the Sabres, they've just been messing with the lines pretty much every game, the, the first three or four games under Granado tonight. Granado gets COVID or he gets put on the COVID list. And now they have the uh, they have Kevin Adams, general manager behind the bench tonight. And this is the first night I've seen them stick with a set of lines. So, I mean, just off the top, I I just have to say, what a disaster in Buffalo. You know, I am someone who drank a bit of the Kool-Aid. I guess I'm an eternal optimist who thought to myself, well, you know, you'll have Eichel and Hall together. You know, it could really be interesting. This could be a team that could actually get something done. Yes, they're in a hard division. You know, they're, I think it's probably too much to think about playoffs, but respectability is the goal here. Mm-hmm. And they've fallen so short of even that measure. Just watching the defense get walked over and over again yes. in just embarrassing fashion. You know, Dustin Tokarski is out there doing all he can as someone who hasn't been in the NHL for five years and just the defense is letting them walk all over him. I feel bad for the guy. Won't somebody think of the Tukarskis? He said he enjoyed his, you know, despite giving up five goals, he said he really enjoyed his first game back. And I'm like, God, I love that. I love that spirit. Just like, it's so sad to see. That's a little bit of Jack Campbell energy, actually. Yeah. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, we have seen a little bit of stability today and I don't really want to get into line combos because I I think that, you know, they're losing again tonight. So what's the guarantee that they stick with anything? But what I think we have begun to see is Taylor Hall and Sam Reinhart are, are getting minutes. They are playing as top line players, even if the, the lines are getting juggled. Eric Stahl is also getting the line one looks at this point. I think Casey Middlestad also looks like he's going to get a little run on power play one, Victor Olofsson, though, essentially a line three plug at this point. Like, I compared him to Adrian Kempe, but on a a, a power play that, that kind of sucks right now on Twitter. Um, you know, with at defense, you have Deline, who's been decent for peripherals lately. But I think at this point, I'd rather have Risto in, like, most non-dynasty leagues, which just feels disgusting to say. I, I don't even know if this is, like, actionable, like, trade... Uh, ad advice it's like i guess these guys are safe for hall and reinhardt maybe all streamers unless you're in a deep league 
or you know, like I you could you could stream out Hall in a lot of leagues. Mm-hmm. And and I streamed out uh, Reinhardt too, just because there hasn't been a whole lot of shooting going on. It just is a grim situation. And like you said about Risto, like at least Risto is going to have some kind of floor for peripherals, and really that's the most you can kind of hope for in terms of uh, reliable contributions to your overall scoring. So yeah, that's not a great look. No, and so uh, yeah, at this point, I will say. They do get the Flyers Monday and Wednesday next week, and we're going to talk about what it what it means to have the Flyers in your schedule a little bit later on, but maybe you hold on to them for the Monday-Wednesday off nights to start next week and then just cut them. Well, I think one of the catalysts, too, for this um, you know, Flyers meltdown was a loss to the Sabres, where mm-hmm. they played really poorly on defense, so there may be some uh, residual psychic damage there. It makes a lot of sense. Lewis, let's get into our next headline. And I'm actually going to ask you to take this one because I know that that we're we're about to talk about a couple goalies that are close to your heart in the cupful. Oh, yeah. So it's been really interesting watching Cam Talbot now take both ends of this back-to-back set. Uh, Played well enough against the Ducks uh, to get the victory on Wednesday night and is now playing Thursday night. We're mid-game, so I'll try not to comment on it too much. Um, 10 saves in the first period against the Blues. But looking at what they've done coming into this game, I think is pretty interesting. So Talbot's had five straight quality shift starts, including a shutout. Uh, the worst performance is there was a 50 save, five goal against game versus Colorado, which is still a quality start and really helped in any league with uh, shots worth points or a category. Over the season, uh, Kakanen possesses the better overall numbers. He's got 12 wins and 15 starts, better save percentage, better goals against, but he's only been a bit over 50% quality starts this season. Um, so, you know, I think what this tells us is that uh, we've got a more reliable option in Talbot in that he's not had a single really bad start all season. That's a start under 850 um, and has just been sort of more consistent, even if the, the numbers are a little lower on average. There's a little bit of a red flag in there uh, since Talbot's shorthanded save percentage is actually better than his even strength, which is unusual and might indicate that Talbot's playing over his head. But it does seem like that reliability and his status as a veteran has pushed Cam Talbot into uh, like goalie number one position uh, with Capo as a clear number two. You think so? Yeah, I mean, and and I I think that you have run down their numbers very eloquently. I, like these, this is a situation where you know we do have a lot of data on both goaltenders, and honestly, like looking at the overall performance, it's hard not to believe that Kapokakinen deserves a one A role rather than a guy who doesn't even get in on a back to back situation. I think that we see more of a a fifty five forty five split probably moving forward, just because I think they'll ride the hot hand a bit more. But to me, this is just clear incumbent bias. Like they they brought in a, a veteran to be the guy. And so, you know, come hell or high water or a 888 save percentage, Cam Talbot is going to get the majority of the starts moving forward. And that's just how coaches and, and teams operate. Yeah, it kind of seems like a Bobrovsky Drieger type situation, mm. except if both Bobrovsky and Drieger were kicking ass the entire season instead of having their real ups and downs like we've seen. Yeah, I think that's actually a great comparison. The difference being that they're on a different timeline of the starter being bad, right? Like Bobrovsky had a full season of being trash, and then this year came out the gate sloppy. If it had been, you know, last year, he he just came to the Panthers this year, and we saw the same progression, I think it would make sense now for it to stabilize. But I mean, as somebody who now has Bobrovsky shares, I, I must say that I'm I'm pretty surprised that he's turned it around to an extent this year. Yeah, I had declared uh, I had declared Dreger the victor in this battle, and I guess I did so prematurely. I'm just, you know, stepping all over myself in these predictions, so I'm going to try and lay off them for a little bit. But yeah, very interesting to watch as these uh, goalie situations work themselves out. We're going to take a quick break coming up. We've got some injuries and some streaks. You're listening to Short Shifts. Credit Karma has always been there to help you make better financial decisions, and now they want to help you even more. With a Credit Karma Money Spend account, you can be rewarded for good money habits. Credit Karma Money is a brand new checking account where you can win cash reimbursements for making purchases. 
Just pay with your debit card, and if you win, you'll be notified on the spot, and your Instant Karma cash will be added back to your spend account. Open your FDIC insured spend account for free. There's no minimum balance requirements, no overdraft fees, and free withdrawals from a network of over 50,000 ATMs. And when you make a purchase between June 8th and June 30th, you'll automatically be entered to win $1 million. Right now, visit creditkarma.com backslash win money to open your free account and start winning instant karma. Go to creditkarma.com backslash win money to sign up for free and start winning. That's creditkarma.com slash win money. Instant Karma is sponsored by Credit Karma. No purchase necessary. Exclusions and terms apply. See rules. Banking services provided by MVB Bank Incorporated. Member FDIC. Maximum balance and transfer limits apply. Welcome back to Short Shifts. Lewis, I want to run through a couple injuries quickly here. Uh, first in Pittsburgh, we have Kasperi Kapanen out with a lower body injury. Uh, in his absence, Jared McCann has been getting power play one looks. Of course, Kapanen was the Penguins' last remaining second line player. So I think at even strength, it's, it's kind of a wash. But we did see McCann score a goal today. And I know that you added McCann in the cupful as well. And uh, I must say solid return so far yeah i tossed him on there because of the back-to-back against buffalo and i also needed a center eligible player very pleased obviously with the power play goal today uh you know assists from some big names so it's always nice to you know get someone who jumps into that spot zach anton reese has also been kind of an interesting uh player for the penguins in the absence Aston reese actually oh zach aston reese my mistake uh, and he uh, has been, you know, quite effective, getting a little bit more of an expanded role too. Had I believe an assist and a shorthanded goal in the game on Wednesday. So another player to keep an eye on. The Penguins in general are quite interesting because they have one of the softer schedules remaining. Lots of games against some bottom dwellers or defensive liabilities uh, like New Jersey, Buffalo, and Philadelphia. Awesome. Uh, we will hop over to New York where the prince who was promised Igor Shostyrkin returned after missing three weeks. He looked good through two periods. He's now given up three goals on 28 shots in a drubbing uh, against the Philadelphia Flyers. 7-3 as of the moment. Uh, New York on pace to put up another seven on Philly for the second time in, what, two weeks at this point? Yeah, this is uh, how Elon and I started discussing uh, our last episode of uh, the last Friday morning episode of Short Shift. So, yeah, uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same, it seems. It it does seem like it may be a case of just blitzing out to a huge lead and then letting Philadelphia claw some of it back. We saw them do that the other night, uh, I believe, against New Jersey, where they were down four to one and scored a couple goals in the waning moments, but never really got within arm's reach of taking the game back. And I think that the only real fantasy takeaway to add on to what you and Elon talked about last week is I think we're just seeing that spam games against the Flyers, like just get, get, load them up, get anyone who's going up against this Hart Elliott tandem right now, because they are soft. They are bad, bad right now. It's uh yeah, you're going to, there's fantasy points to be had as I, as of this moment, uh, the Rangers have just added a seventh goal, as I mentioned, shorthanded. Mika Zibanejad up to another six points. Pavel Buchnevich has two goals. Adam Fox has three or four assists. It's uh, five assists now. Five assists now. Good lord! Yeah, yeah, nothing much to say except woof. Yeah, those streamers, whatever the best available player playing against Philadelphia is going to make for an appealing streamer, no matter what, uh, for the next little while here. One final injury update I want to mention. Alex uh, Petrangelo is now down to day to day. Uh, He should be back at some point in the next week or two, it seems like. I don't think there's much fantasy effect at this point to Shea Theodore, though he's been so good all year, regardless of whether Petrangelo has been in the lineup. Yeah, maybe just cuts a little bit into, you know, some of the offensive capability of your Hagues or your Martinez's. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't see a huge change we've seen. Uh, I think, as you said, that he's been performing very well, uh, independent of whether or not Petrangelo has been in the lineup. That is uh, Theodore. The other injury in Vegas, of course, Max Pacioretty appears to be playing in tonight's game. So that's exciting to get him back in the lineup. Lewis, we'll hop into the streak section of the show. Uh, Why don't you start us off? 
Yeah, all right. So an interesting player that I thought might be worth taking a look at here uh, is uh, Jason Robertson in Dallas. Uh, this guy's got five assists in the last five games. He's been getting top power play deployment. Two of those assists have come on the power play uh, and has been averaging three shots a game during that stretch as well without yet being rewarded. You think that sooner or later one of those is going to trickle its way across the goal line. Uh, so definitely someone worth taking a look at. Uh, not rostered very highly, but has been quite productive uh, and, you know, um, for a pretty solid Dallas power play. Yeah, I I think that Jason Robertson looks like a player. We've talked about Dallas a ton over the past few years, and what's really limited some of their players is the up and down time on ice. Typically, they just they really even out those lines, and that's kind of the main thing that concerns me with Robertson is just we've seen players go up and we see players go down in Dallas, and so as long as he's getting that time on ice, I think you can ride him, but that's what I'm keeping my eye on that and the shot rates to, to make sure that he remains rosterable. And uh, your boy, Max Pacioretty did not wait long, 40 seconds into the game uh, to score a goal in his return from injury. Oh, good. I'm glad I left him on my bench and cook up full. Good, 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 good. Uh, you're going to have to, you're going to have to take the next, uh, the next streak at this point. Yes, I, I can do that for you. Uh, <laughs> the next guy that I want to take a look at uh, is another low-owned player, only 13% rostered on Yahoo, up to 91% rostered in the cook-up pool. It is a deeper league uh, than a lot of leagues that are out there on Yahoo, so that does account for some of the difference. But man, oh man, Alex Iafalo, eight points in the last nine games, averaging over two shots a game in that time and getting monster minutes on line one and power play one. Uh, you know, yeah, he plays for the Kings, but the Kings have shown some offensive proficiency this year. They've got plenty of, you know, scrub defenses in that division. Uh, so a really interesting guy to pick up. I picked him up in one of my shallower leagues, uh, and he's been really rewarding me. Yeah, I think he's, uh, we've talked about Adrian Kempe a few times this year as well. Kind of just two guys who you want them when they're hot, and uh, hopefully you can stream them out when they, uh, if or when they go a little bit colder. We do have one more streak to get to tonight, and that is in Minnesota, where Matt Zuccarello has gone three games in a row without a point. He's working on a fourth. I think that the excitement of seeing him come out and put up 17 points, or rather 20 points in his first 17 games, was, you know, just this feeling of like, oh my God, maybe the Zook of 2018, 2019, and, you know, that whole stretch of years where he was a 60 point player, maybe he could be that. And maybe he's even better if he gets to play with a superstar like Kaprizov. But I think what we're seeing now is a bit of an evening out of that. So on on Keeping Carlson last week, Brian was saying he's not concerned about a cold streak for Zuccarello. And I would agree with that if I felt confident that that line stays together. But since Minnesota has such sketchy depth, like there just is not a ton of scoring punch up and down the lineup, I think they're just going to have to be a team that rotates their lines fairly regularly to try and manufacture a little bit of a spark. And that, to me, means that Zuccarello is vulnerable to quite a bit of instability in his deployment, just because I don't think he's, you know, their clear best winger that has to be on a line with Kaprizov. I think he fit really well to start the year, and right now it looks like uh, he—I wouldn't be surprised at all to see him shuffle down the lineup. When that happens, I'm kind of done with him, to be honest. Yeah, I feel the same. I think if you were able to grab him early on when when he's first started taking off, you know, they started with the first game back, really, it, you were playing with found money, right? It was a great bonus. It cost you probably nothing to get him in. Uh, and you should sort of take that approach with you. You shouldn't think necessarily that since you've had him for a while, you got to keep him. Uh, I might be even looking to potentially offload him if I can find someone who, you know, you can say, look, it's just a little slump here. He's still playing with the same line mates for now. Uh, and, you know, maybe convince them that he's going to uh, show you something a little bit later down the line. Yeah, I would think that you're probably taking a bit of a loss at this point. If you, you're not going to get what you might be hoping to get for a guy who has 20 points in 21 games just because the name value is not really there and I don't like if you're you're either playing with sharks who might know better than to bet in or you're playing with people who might not know too much about who Matt Zuccarello is as somebody who has been in Minnesota for a few years now on a team that hasn't been you know a, a marquee team beyond sort of the the hockey nerd circles that have adapted them this year so yeah I think that you might have a hard time unloading him, but I, I do think that I would look into it. And if you can find somebody who's going to put up a 70-point pace 
a 60 point pace even i think i i might go as far as to take uh but maybe that's a little too low just because if he does stick with Kaprizov, we have seen that there is some chemistry there so yeah i don't think he's a must drop but i just think like i'm not i don't think he's a must hold yeah i think i think yeah you make the move if it makes sense for you but uh otherwise you might hang around and see if uh he can get something going better and you know if no one's biting you know you're not losing a whole lot if you drop into the waiver wire when he is uh, if he remains cold all right, Lewis, we have one more segment here. I kind of wanted to take a look at the weekend streamers coming up because mainly the last few weeks I've noticed Thursday and Saturday have just been such uh, heavy nights where you I haven't been able to fit streamers into my lineup on a Saturday for a few weeks now. So I wanted to look ahead at the Friday and Sunday schedule and see if there were any names that stood out to me uh, on on the of the three teams that have Friday Sunday schedules. So I'm going to I'm going to list a few players here to me. I'd love it if you could tell me sort of if you have any other thoughts or or any takes on on these guys. Um, first of all, the Washington Capitals play Friday Sunday. That is a very tough team to stream off usually because they have kind of a a well-established top six. However, we have seen Daniel Sprong start to pop off just a little bit. He got an assist off Alex Ovechkin. He's playing with Kuznetsov and Ovechkin tonight. So I don't hate a, uh, I don't hate a Daniel Sprong stream Um, in St. Louis. If Jordan Cairo or Jaden Schwartz are available, they are probably must streams this week in shallower leagues because that double that double schedule is probably better than anyone else you're able to get off the wire. I also like Vince Dunn on power play one, as uh, Brian and Elon mentioned on Sunday. Not a bad defensive stream. Um, and then finally in New Jersey, a lot of deep options. Nobody, no like big names that pop off the list. But you could do worse than power play one Yanni Kwokinen, who I know you talked about with Elon last week, or Jesper Bratt. Any of those names kind of stick out to you, Lewis? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think offensively the most gifted names on there are definitely Kairou and Schwartz. Uh, Kairou is is among the top tier of even strength producers so far this season. But for whatever reason, the Blues have seemed quite off lately. Uh, they really have not been able to produce a whole lot of offense. That top line is not doing a ton right now. Um, you know, just something to kind of keep in mind as you look at those Blues players, but maybe uh, they'll find their spark this week here. Um I also, uh, yeah, you mentioned that we talked about Quokinen, uh on the last episode. Elon kind of hand-waved him a little bit, but he has continued to be productive, and he is still getting some decent deployment. Uh, so if you are in a deep league uh, and you're looking for a chance, you know, there's the, the top line, top power, or the top power play players are a little harder to find. Uh, that would be someone that I would definitely be interested in, in grabbing. Uh, and Brat, definitely a little more established, a little bit less of a flash in the pan. Hasn't been on as hot of a streak um, but certainly uh, someone who's capable of being productive for you. I think if I were doing the four of these in order, I know I just poo-pooed the blues, but I think I would go Schwartz, Kairou, Quokinen, Dunn, Brat in that order. I mean, it's not even close for me. Kairou or Schwartz, for sure, if they're available anywhere. Um, and then, yeah, whatever. Vince Dunn, if you need a defenseman. Quokinen, if you need a forward. Just where he's getting a little bit better even strength deployment. Weirdly, the Devils have been running this uh, this top line of Yeni Quokinen, Igor Sharangovich, and uh, Travis Zajac. And, I mean, I guess you could do that if you were an NHL franchise, but go off, Lindy Ruff. You you do your thing. (laughs) All right, Lewis, that's all the time that we have for tonight. Thank you so much for listening. Why don't you sign us out of here? All right. Well, another great week of short shifts in the bank, buddy. Really appreciate it. Always enjoy the time to come and talk with you. And uh, thank you all for coming along for the ride, downloading our episode. We really appreciate it. Please give us a follow at Short Shifts KK. You can find Brian and Elon at Keeping Carlson and Dave Benton of the Stream Scheme at NHL Stream Scheme. Please check out the great sites we've researched our episodes with. Yahoo, Frozen Tools, Natural Stat Trick, and Helpful.com. Our intro and outro music was created by Pat Roach. And until we see you next week, play smart and keep your shifts short.